Good afternoon. My name is Aleko Iskanderian, and I'm honored to play a part in this April 24th commemoration as a proud Armenian from the New Jersey Armenian community. If you're just joining us, April 24th is the official day of the commemoration for the Armenian Genocide, the first modern genocide of the 20th century. This year marks the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. On behalf of the Armenian National Committee of America Eastern Region, I would like to welcome all our viewers and thank you for joining us once again as we close out this solemn weekend paying tribute to the over 2 million Christian Armenians, Greeks, and Assyrians who were massacred by the Ottoman Turkish Empire during the Armenian Genocide from 1915 to 1923. For those of you who joined us over the past few days, we thank you. For those who weren't able to join us on Friday and Saturday, please note that you can still access the content and videos that we shared on the ANCA ER Facebook page and YouTube page. Today, we will revisit the region's past April 24th events, take a tour of Western Armenia, and end this commemorative event with a powerful call to action. Now, please join me on a walk down memory lane as we re revisit past April 24th events. This video shows many of the region's 33 states and depicts our community's fight for justice and recognition throughout the past six decades. The video is narrated by Tatul Sonens Papazian, Joe Daudigian, Ani Haroyan, Dikran Kaligian, and Karine Shinorhokian. Over the first half century after the Armenian Genocide, our commemorations were limited to internalized community remembrances, such as church services. But in 1965, half a century after the genocide, everything changed. Mass demonstrations occurred worldwide, including all major cities of the United States. Second generation Armenian Americans, graduates of colleges and universities during the anti-Vietnam War protests in a surging civil rights era, started to make their voices heard. And that is when these public externalized commemorations and demonstrations began, setting a new pace on a global scale. After the mass demonstrations focusing on the 50th anniversary of the genocide, Armenian genocide commemorations became more outward facing and politicized in the 1970s. Communities worldwide started building Armenian Genocide Memorials, including the first one in Montebello, California. We also started joining other ethnic groups to protest against more than just the Armenian Genocide. For example, we became united and vocal against other injustices, working with Greeks to protest against the Turkish invasion of Northern Cyprus in 1974. The 60th anniversary in 1975 saw the first united commemorations taking place, where all the major Armenian political parties were represented together. That year, the first congressional resolution passed in the U.S. House of Representatives with a National Day of Remembrance against Man's Inhumanity to Man. The ANC lobbied the United Nations for the first time to have the Armenian Genocide cited in their subcommission report on the prevention and discrimination and protection of minorities. We also mobilized to lobby the U.S. government for U.S. humanitarian aid to the Armenian community in Lebanon during the civil war in Lebanon. The 1970s were a decade that saw the ANC becoming active in multiple critically important new fronts as we expanded our grassroots activities.
in the 1980s, the Armenian communities around the world found their collective voices and brought our demands for the recognition of the Armenian genocide to the forefront of our struggle in ways that had never been done before. Repeatedly, we took to the streets in massive numbers. Three generations of Armenian Americans were shouting in the streets of New York and DC. The national spirit, which remained dormant for so long, now roared. People sat on buses for hours and brought with them placards and signs they had made at home. They came from New England, the Mid-Atlantic, and everywhere else to be counted on that day. Nothing was more moving than seeing the faces of the genocide survivors who never missed these events. Most of them could not walk a great distance and were seated on floats. It was so inspirational to walk alongside them. In the 1990s, the Turkish government's genocide denial campaign greatly expanded into new spheres and much more spending of millions of dollars every year. So much of the ANC's fight for justice consisted of combating this new professionalized campaign. When Turkey started donating huge sums to American colleges to establish chairs of Turkish studies, the ANC immediately responded with protests and letter writing, blocking some of them. However, in 1994, Heath Lowry was appointed the chair, Atatürk Chair of Turkish Studies at Princeton University. While the ANC started protesting, working with other groups, three American professors published an article that exposed Heath Lowry as a ghostwriter and a strategist for the Turkish Ambassador's Genocide Denial Campaign. As a result, Princeton was hugely embarrassed, and it was such an uproar, promoted of course by the ANC, that Heath Lowry has essentially been silenced. To date, he has never again written on the topic of the Armenians. Another area was regarding newspapers. The Boston Globe had a written policy barring its reporters from using the words Armenian Genocide unless they were quoting an Armenian. The ANC had years of meetings with the Globe, demonstrations, letter writing, etc., culminating in a meeting where the ANC took the, pro the form of a foremost genocide scholar, Israel Charney, to meet with the Globe editors, and within weeks, the policy was ended. Shortly thereafter, the New York Times, which happened to own the Globe, also ended their policy, inhibiting its, its reporters from using the words Armenian Genocide. As a result of this activism, this part of the wall of silence around the Armenian Genocide was knocked down forever. At the turn of the 21st century, ANCA activism was gaining substantial momentum. Increasing use of the internet established a greater sense of unity by allowing grassroots activists to connect not only with one another, but also with members of Congress. The ANCA website and Rapid Resonder system became platforms for activists and volunteers to receive real-time communication, and the explosion of social media outlets helped to promote mass campaigns for support on our issues. Key relationships were built during this time not only through our congressional friends, but also with coalition partners throughout the nation. Early historical battles include efforts to stop genocide denier Richard Hoagland from being appointed to serve as the U.S. Ambassador to Armenia in 2006. A monumental win in the House Foreign Affairs Committee supporting the Armenian Genocide Resolution H. Res. 106 in 2007 and opposing Matt Bryce's confirmation as the U.S. Ambassador to Azerbaijan in 2010. The election of President Obama in 2008 held great promise for executive branch recognition of the Armenian Genocide. The genocide that did take place uh, uh, against the Armenian people. Uh, it is one of these situations where we have seen a constant denial on the part of the Turkish government. In hindsight, his two terms were a disappointment in that he did not recognize the genocide and his administration helped shepherd through the dangerous Turkish-Armenian protocols. Towards the end of Obama's second term, the ANCA's focus shifted to the massive preparations and organizational needs for the 2015 100th anniversary events. Thousands of Armenians from the Eastern region engaged in this milestone commemoration, culminating in the march through New York City. During the past decade, the ANCA made a concerted effort to obtain individual state recognition of the Armenian Genocide. 
We now stand at the height with Mississippi as the lone outlier. In conjunction with this effort, the ANCA helped organize genocide education campaigns, eventually leading to curriculum bills being passed in 11 Eastern Region states. Time stopped for us all, however, when both the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate overwhelmingly passed the Armenian Genocide Resolutions in late 2019. It was a long overdue victory for High Tide and one that should be celebrated. While our victories in 2019 once again prove the power of grassroots activism, our work is not done. We continue our efforts to obtain justice for our Armenian nation and our people, pushing for the Trump administration to recognize the Armenian genocide as well. The forces that work against our cause remain active and intent on finishing what began 105 years ago. But the ANCA will always be there to protect our nation. What a powerful testament to our continued fight for justice. Up next, we have a special video with footage from Western Armenia provided by George Aljayan from Worcester, narrated by Nairi Balian from the DC area. Although many of us have yet to experience Western Armenia firsthand, as our fight for justice continues, so do our efforts to unite Western Armenia with present day Armenia. As our community comes together for the historic virtual commemoration of the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, we remember our martyrs, we demand accountability, and we call for justice for the ongoing crimes of destruction and denial. For the Armenian Genocide did not end with the dispossession of a homeland and the murder of one and a half million people more than a century ago. The genocide continues through the policies and actions of the Turkish state and its supporters to this day. The denial of the Armenian genocide by Ankara, the desecration of mass graves of genocide victims, and the destruction of Armenian heritage sites across western Armenia and Giligia continue unabated. Of the more than 2,000 churches that stood in historic Armenian lands, only a few dozen remain. They are mostly in ruins and treasure hunters are digging up and destroying what's left. But despite the destruction and the denial, there is a quiet strength, a sense of defiance that permeates our monasteries, fortresses, and our mountains. This strength and defiance comes from Western Armenia. It comes from Van, Mush, Sasun, Dikranagert, Kharpert, Ani, and Palu. It permeates Dorchol, Adana, and Musadakh. And there is a determined resilience in the descendants of genocide victims still living in Turkey as they reconnect with their rich and ancient culture. Once known as hidden Armenians, many of them are hidden no more. They embrace their identity and their heritage. They learn the beautiful language of their ancestors. They dance the intricate dances. They recite the soothing prayers. They sing the gentle melodies. And finally, they tell the stories of their families. As we hear their stories, it becomes clear that we are in this struggle together, for we are all hidden Armenians. The struggle for justice takes place in Gesaria and Sis, in Moscow, in Beirut and Damascus, in Berlin and Paris and London, in Sydney and in Delhi, in Toronto and Montreal, in New York, Washington and Los Angeles, and everywhere there are Armenians. It is the struggle for recognition in the face of denial, the struggle for reparations in the face of theft of land and property, the struggle to rebuild a nation in the face of its destruction. And those who believe that justice means recognition, reparations, and rebuilding can join this struggle. Together, we will follow the words of the indomitable Martin Luther King Jr. who told us never to give up because the arc of the moral universe is long but it bends toward justice. Together we must continue to demand justice every day, every year, together. For as long as the sun 
rises over our mountains. I'd now like to invite ANCA Eastern Region Executive Director, Adam Balian, to share the region's closing message. Thank you, Aleko. Sireli Paregamner Yevangernet. My name is Aram Balian. I am the Executive Director of the Armenian National Committee of America Eastern Region. I'm honored to be here tonight with you to conclude the ANCAER's virtual commemoration of the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Thank you to all the participants, the speakers, the MCs, the AYF, and our community for joining us this weekend in remembering the millions of heroes, saints, and martyrs of the Armenian people. In the face of these unprecedented times, it is important now, more than ever, to come together. Even though we cannot gather in person, this weekend has shown the indomitable spirit of the Armenian American community. It is a spirit that is reflected in the actions of our first responders and essential workers, both here and in Armenia, who are risking their lives for us. We thank you. The current pandemic has not stopped the forces arrayed against our community. In the diaspora, we endure an onslaught of aggressive, multifaceted, multi-million dollar propaganda campaigns waged by Turkey and Azerbaijan, whose ultimate goal is to deny us our history, our rights, our culture, and our homeland. Turkey's illegal blockade has sapped our people of economic opportunity. In Artsakh, Armenians live under the constant threat of Azerbaijani snipers, mortars, and bombs while holding steadfast to their freedom and homeland. In Syria, our people are still under siege from years of civil war, with thousands of Armenians displaced seeking refuge around the world. Despite all of this and more, we have survived. We have flourished. We have prevailed. Each time we come together, even virtually, at events like this, we have prevailed. Each time we sing our anthem, we have prevailed. And each time we see an Armenian child smile with their beautiful black eyes and wide toothy grin, we have prevailed. Together, we will continue to prove our nation and our people will always endure as we work with organizations such as the Armenian Relief Society, Hamaskain, Homenet Men, and the Armenian Youth Federation to ensure our survival. Together, we will join the many Armenian National Committee advocates who traveled from around the region to the representatives' offices in their districts and in Washington, D.C. There, they lobbied for U.S. recognition of the genocide, for increased monitoring of the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan, for more aid to our homeland, for greater assistance for Syrian Armenians, and for so many other Armenian American priorities. Because it is together that we made our voices heard, and assured the U.S. Congress's permanent recognition of the Armenian Genocide through a unanimous vote in the Senate and a final tally of 411 for and only five against in the House of Representatives. Together, we helped pass SRES 150 and HRES 296. We will continue to advocate for Congress to do more, to speak out against Azerbaijan's unprovoked attacks, killings, and ceasefire violations to secure U.S. funding for the demining of Artsakh and to reject Turkey's gag rule, ensuring the current administration and all future presidents recognize the Armenian genocide. We are the second army of Armenia. Our ANC activists, supporters, and members like you are the backbone of our continued struggle against those that would see us wiped from history. The Armenian National Committee of America is you, your family, your friends, and the thousands of advocates across the region who work quietly, in ways big and small, to advance the Armenian cause. These strong and selfless Armenians represent the best of our community, working for the memory of those martyred 105 years ago, and they are the best hope for our future. With our friends and supporters, we will continue our march to justice until the historical and timeless rights of our nation are fully restored. Together, we can make a difference, and united, we are strong.
please stay safe in these trying times. And thank you for participating in this historic virtual event. And thank you for your support of our community and our people. Thank you, Adam. As we close out today's program, we want to leave you with messages from our Eastern region communities and a call to action. 80 activists from throughout the Eastern region provided their voices as the ANCA Eastern region continues its fight for justice. We encourage you to take our call to action and share it with the world. For me, justice is for Armenia to be great. The realization of a free and independent united Armenia. A free, independent, and united Armenia. Hayutuna azad oren koya deve azad angakhev miyatsyal hayastani mech. Unifying the Armenian community to build a new Armenia. Continued thriving of our people all over the world. Our community is surviving and thriving even after such atrocities. And it means non-negotiable genocide education. Non-negotiable genocide education. Non-negotiable education of the Armenian genocide. Be taught in schools. As a mandatory topic in schools. Taught in all schools. Spreading awareness about the history of the event. Development of Armenian history and literature. Mandating genocide education. Requiring children of the United States to learn the truthful events of the genocide. Sharing the true story of the events of 1915. Having an abundance of knowledge of our history and being able to educate the future, my teachers and classmates, and the people around me my school, my community, that have never heard about the Armenian people or their struggles. Being able to open up a textbook and see that my ancestors are being represented in world history today. Global school systems around the world. Education worldwide. 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 Justice means never having to explain the Armenian genocide to another human being. I want to live in a world where this massacre is accepted as a part of history to honor our ancestors who fought and died for our existence. Hidden Armenians being able to live freely and openly in our homeland. And the rights of the people who live under Turkish rule. Opening up the borders for free trade. Freedom and equality for all. We are able to express our culture and heritage without fear of reprisal in our homeland. And not having to worry about Turks, Azeris, or any other group deciding that Armenian lives are less than in any way. Justice for me is singing our songs and dancing our dances. Can see Omar? Hi, Hussein. Without fear of persecution or discrimination. It would give Armenians a sense of safety. Without fear of reprisal means prevention of future anti-Armenian violence and atrocities throughout Western Armenia. To me, justice means Azeri killer Rano Safarov is recalled to prison for the brutal murder of Kukem Margaryan. Journalists in Turkey are free to speak up about the Armenian genocide. Genocide museums in every major city in Turkey. Justice starts with permanent U.S. policy recognition. Permanent U.S. recognition. Recognizing it on a national standpoint. Permanent international recognition. The world to recognize. Around the world, the death of our ancestors is recognized. By every country. In all countries. A worldwide recognition. Complete global recognition of the genocide. And respected as they have the Jewish Holocaust. I would like Turkish government to tell Turkish people what really happened in 1915. Justice is when Turkey recognizes the genocide. The Turkish people recognizing what their ancestors did to the Armenians. I want Turkey to recognize the Armenian genocide. Recognition for what happened in 1915. Recognition for the struggles our ancestors went through. Yes, Turkey to recognize the Armenian genocide. Recognition of this horrific event. Recognition of the genocide from Turkey. By the international community and the Republic of Turkey. For Turkey to admit its crimes. Admitting to what happened. Turkey must accept what they did during the Armenian Genocide. The truth. That the right people are held accountable. Holding perpetrators of inhumane crimes responsible for their actions. Turkey finally owning up to their big mistake they made. So that the world can see what cost the lives and dispersion of millions of Armenians. 
Recognition of the Armenian Genocide by the Turkish Government No matter what, we will never have complete justice. There will never be complete justice for the Armenian Genocide until Turkey is forced to accept its moral and financial responsibility to the Armenian nation before the international community. Armenian Genocide means to us is an atonement for this lady, our great-grandma Manushak. That whatever happened to my family won't happen to anyone else. Justice will show the world what my great-grandparents along with 1.5 million other Armenians sacrificed to keep our Armenian heritage alive. That our great-grandparents' legacy of sacrifice and surviving will be recognized by everyone around the world. Justice is security for our homeland Armenia and Artsakh. And self-determination of Artsakh. Securing safety and security in the Republic of Artsakh. Secure borders for Armenia and Artsakh. International recognition of an independent Artsakh. Azad, Angakh, Zove, Zov, Niatyal, Hayastan, Ye Artsakh. Getting Garapakh, Nakhichivan, and President Woodrow Wilson's designated lands back. Returning to Woodrow Wilson's map, recognizing and upholding the Treaty of Severus, which was signed and disregarded but will never be forgotten by the Armenian people. As perpetrators of the Armenian Genocide, Turkey has to return all lands. Turkey needs to return. Return. The return. Back what they took from our homeland. Van Karpet and Dikanagar. Mount Arara, Van, beautiful city of Van, protecting the churches and other buildings. It's the return of the Armenian Catholic state of Cilicia in Cis. It's not just about taking back historic Armenia. It's about them recognizing and giving back what's already ours. Our history, our fortunes, and our lands. And all of our lands. Our historic lands. One of our historic sites and lands. The whole area back to us. An Armenian port on the Black Sea and restoring proper borders to get back land that is rightfully ours. Justice means getting our lands back and making Eastern Turkey Western Armenia again. It means that Armenians would be able to reclaim their homeland in Western Armenia. Walking through Western Armenia without crossing any borders knowing that it belongs to the Armenian people. It's once again owning my family's orchards in Giligia. Owning the deeds to my family's homes in Kharpert and Giligia. Running my great-grandfather's pharmaceutical business in Gesaria. Justice means going home. Being able to return to and regain the homes of my grandparents, who I never knew. Is that my family can return to Gadi. Visiting my grandmother's homeland of Van. Turkey should give our lands back. Give our lands back. Justice is giving back our lands. Getting our occupied lands back. And gives us our land back. Is getting our lands back. And it being recognized as Armenia. Making Eastern Turkey, Western Armenia once again. You would be to get our land back, including Mount Ararat. For my kids to be able to see Mount Ararat. And I will be able to climb Mount Ararat. It means dancing kochari on Ararat. For the US and foreign governments to recognize that Ararat is ours. Turn of Mount Ararat to the Armenian nation. Visiting Mount Ararat without leaving Armenia. Without leaving Armenia and be in Armenia at the same time. Within Armenia's borders. Mount Ararat back in Armenia. Justice for me is for Turkey to admit its crimes, accept its fate, and return what was stolen. Is receiving reparations for our lands. And finally pay back to Armenia. And continues with discussing reparations. Reparations for the Armenian Genocide. Reparations for the Armenian Genocide. Ye vajare mersup na hadakterun aryan kina. Making reparations towards Armenia. To the Armenian nation. Reparations. Turkey paying reparations. Reparations. Artar Hadutz. Pay reparations. Reparations to be paid for the theft of a nation's wealth. Pay all damages to the Armenian nation. Paying for their actions. Pay reparations for their crimes. Any sincere apology. Because it is very overdue. And the assurance that history will never repeat itself. To prevent history from repeating itself. To make sure it doesn't happen again. That will be justice. That's what it means. Without it, it's not justice at all. We need justice now. So my grandparents and our holy martyrs can finally rest in peace. <laughs>